Hello and welcome back in Intellect Tube. Today we are going to study about waveguides, its different modes of operation and cutoff frequency for various modes. So let's start. Waveguides are the structures that guides electromagnetic waves with minimal loss of energy by restricting expansion of the wave to one or two dimension. Commonly used waveguides are rectangular cross-sectional waveguide and circular cross-sectional waveguide. These waveguides are used in most of the applications. During our whole study about waveguide, we will have to take some assumptions. The first assumption is the waveguide is infinitely long and uniform along its length. The second assumption is the waveguide is filled with a source-free and lossless dielectric. The meaning of source-free is that the material inside the waveguide should have zero volume charge density and lossless means the inside material should have zero conductivity and finite values of permittivity and permeability. Next assumption is the guide walls are perfectly conducting and the last one is electric and magnetic field are time harmonic. Now let's see what are the different modes of operation in a waveguide. A waveguide basically operates in four different modes which are transverse electric mode, transverse magnetic mode, transverse electric and magnetic mode and the hybrid mode. In short, these modes are represented by TE, TM, TEM and HE respectively. Here the word transverse means field is perpendicular to the propagation direction and is zero along the direction of propagation. Let's consider we have a rectangular waveguide. Draw all the three axes on the three different edges of it. So here wave will propagate in positive z direction. If electric field in z direction is zero and if exists only in x and y direction then this is called transverse electric mode. On the other hand, if magnetic field is zero in the propagation direction, then this is called transverse magnetic mode. Here only x and y component of magnetic field will exist and when both electric and magnetic field becomes zero in z direction, then this mode is known as TEM mode. In TEM mode, none of the fields exist in the wave propagation direction and the last one is hybrid mode in which both the fields along z direction is non-zero. Now let's see the feed mechanism in a rectangular waveguide. Here we have the cross section of a rectangular waveguide. If we apply a horizontal or a vertical feed, it will always give the suitable electric field in a direction perpendicular to the wave propagation. Feed line here is nothing but a cable or transmission line that connects antenna to the receiver. So horizontal and vertical feed always give the electric field only in xy plane and electric field in z direction will be zero. So this is transverse electric mode. The number of feed points in horizontal and vertical direction determines the values of integer m and n and hence the mode is called TEMN mode. If the feed is along the guide axis Z, then it will always give a surrounding magnetic field in XY plane and magnetic field in Z direction will be zero. So this is a transverse magnetic mode of operation. Here also number of feed points decide the values of integer M and N. If we see from bottom, we find there is one feed point so m equal to 1 and if we see from side then also we see one feed point so n equal to 1 also. So this is an example of TM11 mode. Here are some examples of different different feed combinations for transverse electric mode. Let's see some examples for transverse magnetic mode also. Here we can see that even if only a single feed is there in TM mode, then it contributes to both M and N values. So 
M and N can never be zero for transverse magnetic mode. That means Tm zero N and Tm M zero are non are non existing mode and are called evanescent mode. Now the most important parameter in waveguide is its cutoff frequency. More than 70% questions in waveguide come from this topic only. The formula for cutoff frequency of a rectangular waveguide is Fc equal to under root m by a whole square plus n by b whole square into c by 2. Here a and b is the horizontal and vertical dimension of the waveguide, c is the speed of light and we have just studied what m and n are. So better you remember this formula because whenever numerical come from waveguide this formula is used most of the times. Cutoff frequency is a frequency below which waveguide does not allow the wave to pass through. The mode which have least value of cutoff frequency is called dominant mode because it allows maximum number of frequencies. The value of cutoff frequency will be minimum when one of the m and n is zero. It depends on the values of a and b. For TE10 mode, cutoff frequency will be c divided by 2a and for TE01 mode, cutoff frequency will be c divided by 2b. Here if a is greater than b, then TE10 will be dominant mode and if a is less than b, then TE01 will be dominant mode. So dominant mode depends on larger dimension. If two different modes have the same cutoff frequency, for instance TE21 and TM21 have the same cutoff frequency, then they are called degenerate modes. Now let's do some numerical problem. Here is a question from 2015 ISRO exam. In this question, they have given the values of A and B and also the frequency of carrier wave and they are asking about the false statement for TE01 mode. So let's calculate the cutoff frequency for TE01 mode first. When we put m equal to 0 and n equal to 1 in this formula, we will get Fc equal to C divided by 2B. That will be equal to 14.15 GHz. So minimum frequency that can pass in TE01 mode is 14.15 GHz. So TE01 is a non-propagating mode for 3 GHz frequency. So option A is correct because it is a false statement. But when we fill the waveguide with a proper material, the value of C will decrease. And so cutoff frequency may go below 3 GHz. So option C is a true statement. So that's all for today. अगर आपको ये वीडियो अच्छा लगा हो तो प्लीज लाइक और सब्सक्राइब जरूर करें एंड एज ऑलवेज थैंक्स फॉर वाचिंग